welcome back everyone to chapter 13. Here we are in the final section, section three of chapter 13. This is arc length and curvature. Uh, in this video, right, we're going to be upgrading. The claim is we've experienced arc length a couple times before in our Calc 2 class. We have did arc length for regular old Cartesian equations, we did it for uh, parametric equations, and we did it uh, for polar equations. And the claim is, well, we're going to be parametrizing curves, right? Uh, and so this is going to be closely related to actually our parametric equations for arc length that we brought up in Calc 2. So again, we're going to upgrade. We're going to go ahead and formally define our arc length function, and then we're going to get a little bit of practice all in this video. Um, note, right, if you're reading in the book, again, great for you. Uh, in this uh, class, in this Math one, uh, sorry, math 234 here at MSU, we are not covering curvature, the normal or binormal vectors. Uh, so if you read it, great. This is great kind of extra information. But again, those won't appear on quizzes, exams, things like that, at least not at the time of recording this here in 2017. So that's not in our curriculum currently. All right. So first of all, definition. We have a nice parameterization, R of T. We want this really to be smooth. So we want a nice smooth parameterization on some specified interval, probably the one that we're going to be integrating over. So some interval I. And it's going to be smooth if the derivative is continuous continuous, and the derivative is not equal to zero on the interval i. If that's the case, the curve is called smooth, and this is a smooth parametrization. OK, so we will need this uh, in order to actually define our arc length formulas and whatnot. Uh, in reality, though, every function that I give you is going to be smooth. Otherwise, you couldn't calculate the arc length of it. So I'm only going to give you smooth functions. This is really just so that you know myself and other mathematicians can sleep at night to say that you can't technically use what we're about to go over for any function, but any reasonable function really is going to be smooth. OK, so now let's go back and think about kind of our old definitions and theorems from Calc 1 and Calc 2, and then we're going to upgrade this for our Calc 3 uh, arc length function. So the claim is, uh, back in the day, if you had a velocity, right, so this is some derivative of position, right, which I'm going to call r prime of t, right, and this is not a vector function, right? Back in Calc 1, we were just doing, you know, single variable. We didn't have all this stuff about vectors. Then we could talk about the total distance traveled, right? Total distance traveled is a lot like arc length is given by this distance is the integral from a to b of the absolute value of the derivative. OK, that's nice. What about in Calc 2, right? So when we started actually doing things, we had a parameterization x and y. So let's say we have a curve parametrized by x component and y component. Then we denoted that the length of our curve, uh, some c, which was usually denoted l of c, the length of the curve c, is given by the formula. And we integrated uh, from, again, a to b. And this was x prime squared, y prime squared. And the claim is we can actually rewrite this. So I want to revise this uh, theorem right here. And so let's go ahead and suppose that this curve is parameterized by some vector function. So r of t, and it still has an x component and a y component. But now we're just using the whole vector notation rather than the space curve notation. And then the length of the curve is given by, and notice so we have these derivatives, they're being squared and they're in a square root. So this looks a lot like, to me, a magnitude, right? So the magnitude has the square root and things are being squared, each of the components. Well, where do those components come from? Well, they come from the derivative, right? These are x primes and y primes. So that's the derivative of each one of these components. So this is going to be r prime of t dt. And now this is a vector, right? So this is a vector function, really. And so this is a way that we can kind of revise or rewrite our Calc 2 formula. And now notice, when you look at this one uh, here, it looks very similar now to our Calc 1 formula, right? Back when we just had you know, a single variable, right? Now they look a lot very similar. It's just this one is a vector instead of just a scalar function. All right. So finally, what I'd like to do is, while we have a nice vector formula for uh, arc length in two dimensions, let's go ahead and make one up for three dimensions, right? 
So the theorem is that if we have a three-dimensional space curve, and let's say it's parameterized, we have an x component, a y component, and a z component, then the length of c, which we're going to denote again L of c, is given by the formula integral from a to b of the magnitude of the derivative of now, right, this is a three-dimensional vector here, dt. And if I want to write this out with its components and stuff, right, so the magnitude, we're going to have a square root, and then we square each one of the components of the derivative. So we're going to have x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared plus z prime of t squared. And so you can see that this is very, very similar to actually our two-dimensional arc length. But all we've done is we've sprinkled in the z component, right? We just sprinkled that in kind of exactly how you would expect, right? So here it is. Without the z component, we just have the x's and the y's. But if you just sprinkle in the z's kind of exactly as you would probably guess, uh, that will give us the arc length in these three-dimension uh, coordinate system. Okay, so let's do a little bit of practice, right? So here I have a nice picture. This is one of these helixes, and I would like to figure out the arc length of this vector function from t equals 0 to t equals 5. So again, we're going to do the length of this curve is equal to, well, it's specified we go from 0 to 5, so I'm going to do from 0 to 5, and this is going to be the magnitude of the derivative of this. So, okay. The derivative of cosine is going to be negative sine. The derivative of sine is going to be cosine. And the derivative of 2t is going to be 2. So I'm going to need to take the magnitude of this. right? OK, so 0 to 5 and the magnitude, well, let's square each component. So I'm going to have sine squared, right? because negative times negative will be positive. We have cosine squared. And then we have 4. right? So I'm just squaring each component of the derivative and then putting it all under my square root, right? Because that's my magnitude formula. That's my length formula. And now notice, sine squared plus cosine squared. Ah, oh, that's very nice, right? Sine squared plus cosine squared is just equal to 1. So I can do this as the uh, square root of 1 plus 4. Well, that's just going to be 5, right? So let me go ahead and erase that, and I'll just put 5 dt. And now I can integrate this very easily. It's a constant, so this is going to be root 5 times t and I need to evaluate that from 0 to 5. So of course when I plug in 0, I'll just get out 0, so my final answer is going to be here 5 root 5. So that is the length of the curve uh, from 0 to 5, right? If I was to get out like a tape measure or something like this and actually measure out the curve, the claim is it would be length 5 times root 5. All right, so that's how we can actually use this to calculate out arc length. The last thing that I want to go over in this video is an arc length function. This will become very, very useful in chapter 16. We'll get a little bit of practice of it right now. Uh, but the idea here is that if we go ahead and we treat this b as a variable, then we can get an arc length function called s of b. For now, it's a little bit weird to think of b as a variable. So s of b is going to be the integral from a to b of the magnitude of the derivative of our vector function dt. But yeah, people don't really like to use b as a variable. So let's rename it and let's get uh, maybe a variable t or something like this. So I'd like s of t, for instance. So now this is going to be an integral from a to t. And you have to be careful because you don't want to double use uh, variables, right? So if t is going to be my variable up here, I don't want to use t down here. So let's go ahead and use u. So I'm going to use r prime of u and du, something like this. And now this is an arc length function. The nice thing about this is that you haven't specified a stopping point, right? So you can kind of stop whenever you want. You can decide on that later. So this is, you know, you can do it from 0 to just, sorry, from 0 to just any old t. And then later on, you could decide, OK, I want to plug in 5, or I want to plug in 7, or 9, or 12, or anything, right? And so it's very nice to have a function. And we'll actually be seen later on that uh, there's reasons why you would actually want to use this function and take the derivative of it and multiply it by things. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So we'll get to that here in chapter 16 in great and gory detail. All right, that's it for this video. Next time we're going to get more practice right in class. We'll do more practice 
uh, calculating out arc length and calculating this arc length function. I'll see you then.